Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good, good, good. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me. And you notice by now, or at least you should, for those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to you as well. My name is Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant, and the name of this wonderful channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. Guys, welcome to practice session number 91. This is my first practice session of 2024, I believe it is. Um, and I'm excited about it. I got some VI preloaders coming out here today, and if this is your first time here, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I'm out here in Pula, Georgia. I also do traveling practice sessions as well, and I got a bunch of them coming up, guys. So definitely go to my website, for more information on that, click on where it says upcoming events. But what we do out here is I have 13 different exercises, plus we do a follow the leader and a bonus exercise and a slow race. Uh, and we come out here and practice how to ride these motorcycles. And when I say these motorcycles, I'm talking about all types of motorcycles, not just this type. As a matter of fact, let me introduce my girl. This is uh, Valiant. This is my 2019 CVO Street Glide. And she'll be, I'll be using her today to uh, practice with these fine people that are coming out here. But we come out here and we learn how to ride these motorcycles in the friction zone between one and 10 miles per hour to build up our confidence. And we do this with no arrogance, no egos, no negativity, no judgment, none of that crap. None of that crap exists here in, pre in uh, Preloader Nation. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, definitely do so, please, it helps me out. Hit that like button, that definitely helps me out too. It helps out the algorithm. And share these videos with people because that's what this is all about, I say all the time. I'm one guy with a YouTube channel, but sharing these videos are gonna help us get out of this whole 2% of motorcycle riders actually knowing how to ride the bike, all right? So once they get here, guys, we're gonna talk to them. We're gonna find out their names, where they live, what they ride, how long they've been riding, more importantly to me, how long they've been practicing slow speed riding, and what they rate themselves on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best in slow speed maneuvers. That number's for them and them only. And a lot of the times, some people come out here, they've never really practiced like this. So they might rate themselves at a, with a higher number. And then at the end of the day, when I ask them again, that's when they say, hey, you know what? I think I rated myself a little bit too high. And that's fine. Listen, this is not a competition. That's why it's important to know that as well. There's also no pressure out here. People come out here. I said how many things I have out here to do. Doesn't mean you need to do them all. All right, guys? Again, check out my practice session playlist if you want to see past practice sessions. But Check this one out too, guys. There's chapters in it, so you can kind of skip around. Of course, I don't want you to do that because you might miss something. All right, guys, let's do it. What's your name? Nicole Bishop. Where are you from, Nicole? Jacksonville, Florida. How long have you been riding a motorcycle? 2014. Okay. What are you riding today? Street Glide, 2014. <laughs> um, does it have a name? No. Okay. How long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Um... Ever since I started riding, I've been trying, mm -hmm. but truly practicing last year. Okay, okay. And if you had to give yourself a rating, slow speed, 1 to 10, 10 being the best, what would you give yourself? I'm going to say a 5. 5. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What's your name? Kevin Bruce. Where are you from, Kevin? Uh, near Moody Air Force Base, Ray City, Georgia. Okay. Uh, how long have you been riding a motorcycle? Uh, basically since I was nine or ten as a kid off and wow. on, but mm -hmm. pretty heavy on the baggers the last ten years or so. Good. What are you riding today? Uh, my 2017 Indian Roadmaster today. Does it have a name? Uh, it's actually Ken Blue, which has multiple meanings. Okay, okay. How long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Uh, very little off and on. Mm -hmm. My better half, I take her to a high school parking lot and we both practice a little bit here and there, but not enough. Good. And if you had to give yourself a rating one to ten, ten being the best slow speed, what would you give yourself? As far as slow speed and U-turns, probably a one or a two. Okay. Pleasure to meet you, man. Same here. Thank you, Robert. All right. Welcome. Good morning. Good welcome morning. to, welcome to, Jerry, don't answer. Welcome to practice session number? 91. All right. 
Very good. Did you know that? I've been watching 88, and I know you put out a couple more, and I forgot. Damn it, I should have asked you, Kevin. <laughs> I would have guessed probably 90, so I would have been wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone have a problem being on YouTube? No? Okay, good. I figured as much. All right. So let's get through the ground rules first. Front brake grabs, right? There's already some push-ups on the ground, but we're going to let that slide after this speech. If you squeeze the front brake within a, while we're doing a slow speed maneuver, or while you're doing a slow speed maneuver, 10 push-up penalty, it's voluntary, right? It's just something to make you aware because, again, if you do this all the time instinctively, you know, you're not going to have any knowledge of it. But I'll be there to watch. And when you guys pulled up, I always watch you pull up. Hey, each and every one of you, except for you, Jerry. You guys look so smooth. And then at the end, right? Now, Nicole is literally like a ballet. I always say we're going to be ballet dancing out here or slow dancing. That's how Nicole is when she stopped. I mean, she's on the tip of her toes like this, right? I'm not talking about the balls of her feet like that. So, but like I always say, that's not that relevant. See, people that really don't know how to ride these things think about that more because they're always looking for this to bail them out of not having control of the motorcycle at slow speeds. So, but that's why this is important to know this stuff, okay? Putting your foot down, 10 push-up penalty, right? I'm not talking about when you come to a stop. But if you feel like you're going to fall, if you feel like the motorcycle is going to drop and you put your foot out, that's a 10 push-up penalty. This includes coming to a stop. So if you come to a stop and you put your foot down, that's 10, 20, 30, right? Within reason. And I understand that we're trying to work some stuff out. Any questions on that? Does everyone here understand why I don't want you to put your foot down when you feel falling? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Does everyone here understand what keeps the motorcycle up at slow speeds? Power to the rear wheels. You like that answer? You like that answer, Jerry? Yep. I'd like one more word added to that. Sufficient. There we go. Sufficient power to the rear wheel. Because if it's not sufficient, we can be in the friction zone, and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and the bike is still falling. So it's important that we also understand that um, everything that we do today, we have to be subtle. Our movement should be smooth. That's with the throttle, the clutch, the rear brake. Even the handlebar turns, nice and easy, right? Because anything herky-jerky, you know, we don't, most people don't like the way the motorcycle feels moving slowly anyway. If you start adding herky-jerky stuff to it, it's just going to feel worse, all right? So, if you feel the motorcycle falling, we're already in the, most likely, yeah, him in this way, most likely we're already in the friction zone, right? So, if you feel something happening, address it as soon as you feel it, and it's a small movement. Okay? We clear with that? Oh, today's going to fly by because you guys are looking like you're magna cum laude. All right. And knowing it and doing it two different things. Exactly. And I, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. He said knowing it and doing it are two different things. And that's why when we come out here, even if we know stuff, I always say we got to talk about it. Because if I ask somebody a question, they won't know the answer. However, when they get out there, they'll do it. We, we need to know what and why we're doing what we're doing. Good morning. Nice shirt, man. Thank you. You're going to be owing us some push-ups because you're, you're four minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> I already own 250. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing, guys, is what I feel is one of the most beneficial things, and clearly you guys will benefit from it. And I have to say, when you pulled in and when you pulled in, one of the things that people I find struggle with the most is moving slowly with the handlebars turned. And you both did that great, right? So first thing we're going to do is short starts and stops. Does anybody here not practice that? Oh, man, this is going to be great, right? That's what we're going to do. And, quite, and all I want you guys to do, and really, it's important because of the way I told you guys you came to your final stop, that's where this skill comes in, right? We already talked about what keeps the motorcycle upright at slow speeds, right? Sufficient power to the rear wheel. How much is your balance relevant? at slow speeds on your motorcycle, if you had to put a percentage number on it? Probably 85 to 100%. Our balance is the control of the bike. I mean, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how you would well, put that. Power is probably more so, but I'll let you just zero. Yes, zero. Because we already talked about what keeps it up at slow speeds, power. So our balance is irrelevant. I just had a conversation on the phone with this guy about this, and he was going back and forth with me. 
And I guess he just didn't understand the, the way I was wording it. I was saying to him, I said, the reason why I'm enjoy enjoying this conversation is because I'm, my, my, my argument is based on fact. If we know that power keeps the bike up, right? If the bike's going 20 miles per hour, even without power, it's going to stay up. But eventually, when it starts to slow down, it's going to fall. So if power keeps it up, if power is the answer when it's falling, we don't need balance, right? So if I can open up my clutch and pass out, the bike is still not going to fall. I'm out, but my clutch is still open. So, all right. So it's important that we know that because we have to fall back on that when we start doing stuff out, out there. It's like, what am I doing? So when you're bringing this motorcycle to a stop, especially with the handlebars turned, at that speed, the bike's going to want to fall, right? The only thing gonna keep, that's going to keep it up is that power. And so what, motor, what most motorcycle riders do is, as they're getting to the end of their stop, clutch in, all the way in, and coast the rest of the way. Now, that, that's probably going to work most of the time. But the other parts of the time, when the bike starts to do this, it's not going to work. And that's when you see front brake grabs and two feet coming out. And people are terrified to stop, right? And this is the reason why. Because in that moment, they're not in control of that motorcycle. So I'm getting ready to do a video on this. I was riding to a stop at a stop sign. And it just so happens that at that stop, the ground is all messed up. So that's when you really feel this, when the ground is not smooth and the bike is doing... Now, if you just got the clutch pulled in, that's not going to feel good at all. So remember, as you're coming to a stop, and you'll hear me do it. I, if you need me to demonstrate it, I will. The last moments of that stop, I actually open my clutch back into the friction zone. Just a little bit. But again, it's a feel thing. We're going to be in our feelings today. I'm going to address it as soon as I feel it. And I'm going to give it as much as I need to give based on what I feel. So we're doing a few things at the same time. But that's why we have to practice this stuff. So it's just like anything else. When stuff becomes muscle memory, you can do five different things at once because you're so accustomed to doing it. I'm coming to a stop, and it seems counterintuitive, but I'm opening the clutch and at the same time applying the rear brake. But again, your rear brake and your power to the rear wheel, they work together in harmony. It keeps your bike rigid at slow speeds, but don't make them fight. Don't give too much brake or too much throttle and too much brake because now you're making them fight. That's when you're running the clutch problems, okay? So as you're coming to that stop, Open the clutch, friction zone, friction zone, I'm rear brake, rear brake, friction zone, friction zone. And sometimes I will stay in the friction zone all the way until I stop. Boom. And this is your goal today. All day today, your goal is to stop with your foot going down like that or like that. That's it. That's the goal. If you do anything, oh, well, for Nicole, like that. <laughs> but I want you to keep in mind, if Nicole puts both of her feet down, that means the bike is level. If she puts one foot down, the bike can lean a little bit more. So she's going to get more foot on the ground. So it's even more advantageous for her to stop with one foot down. Uh, but also, it's more av advantageous for her to be comfortable stopping smoothly. Because she's got less feet to put down. So this, you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be stopping like this. Because again, there's some areas out here. I've kind of blown all the areas out as far as the sand and stuff where we're going to be doing stuff. But when you're out there in the real world, it's not always grippy. So you need to be comfortable and confident. Stopping your motorcycle just like that. That's the goal. If you stop like this, that just means that you're out of coordination. You're ready to put your foot down because you feel falling. So again, uh, when you're bringing your motorcycle to a stop, I don't want your legs to be an emergency kickstand, right? We're putting this down when we're finished, not to catch the bike. So anytime you do this, just make a mental note of it. And the beauty of this is, like Nicole told me, every time I go out, I practice stopping. Smooth stop. So everything, when I say stop the motorcycle today, smooth stop. And the first exercise we're going to do, short starts and stops. That's how I want you stopping the motorcycle all day today. And quite frankly, the rest of your motorcycle riding career, career, life. That's how I want you to stop. Nice and smooth. Questions? Taking off, same thing. And when that exercise, that's why I'm giving you short distance of space. I don't want you to, right? Again, herky-jerky in a... Most motorcycle riders are going to introduce speed because it makes them feel better because the then the motorcycle's taking over the responsibility. All right, but today is going to be on you. And when you start, I want the handlebars going like this. I want you to work that out. I want you to feel that and address it, right? Do you need speed to address it with? A little bit, but power is what you really need. So what I do find is that initial takeoff, 
I ask you to take off slowly. You don't like the way it feels right away because as soon as you pick your foot up, you feel falling. So if that happens with you, open the clutch up a little bit quicker and then close it right back just to get the bike to stand up so that you feel comfortable. All right, lastly, there's five steps I want you guys to follow all day today before you move the motorcycle. And starting the motorcycle is not one of them. We're going to assume it's already running. What's always step number one? First gear. Make sure the motorcycle's in first gear. Bing! Step number two? Cover the brake. Cover the rear brake. And we cover it because? So did you have what? We have sufficient power when you engage the friction zone. Why do we cover the rear brake? Because we're prepared to stop it on top. You like that answer? You like that answer? Okay, so we cover the rear brake because now we're going back to the whole smooth thing. We want to be smooth. So if your foot's already covering it, meaning it's resting on it, you're not applying pressure, but it's resting on it. If you need it, it's easier to apply gentle pressure to it. Whereas if you're not covering it and something happens, you're going to smash at it. Or it's going to increase the odds that you smash at it. So that's why we cover the rear brake. Step number three, put them on the spot. The veteran. <laughs> Preload and keep it loaded. That's right. Preload the throttle and keep it loaded. And everybody here knows what preloading the throttle is. Okay, everybody, I can hear your exhaust. I heard you before I saw you, so that's good. Step number four. That's right. Slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. But again, I say slowly release it because I want you to take off slowly. But if you feel falling as soon as you start to take off, open the clutch up a little bit more. Okay? We're always in control. But that's the good thing is, even if we open up the clutch faster than we want it to, that's why we're covering the rear brake. So as soon as we feel that, we can correct it. What does the rear brake give us? Control and correction. Control and correction. That's what the rear brake gives us. And step number five, as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, pick your foot up. I'm going to be looking at that, guys. So if you go to move and I see you do this and tap, that's 10, right? Because once it starts to move, we don't need our feet. Well, we don't need our feet on the ground. Okay, good. All right, and remember, when you stop at a cone, I don't want you to pass the next cone, right? So this is about being situationally aware too, knowing the length of your motorcycle, blah, blah, blah. Now, nobody here is riding a, yeah, everybody's got, wow, look at that. Everybody's got a batwing type fairing. Good, so you can kind of have a better idea of where the front wheel is. If you've got a fixed fairing, you don't know what the hell's going on up there, right? So I'm glad I brought my street glide. All right, any questions? All right, let's do it. Short starts and stops, guys. Foot up. Work it out. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Rear brake, rear brake. Foot up. Work it out. See my handlebars? When I need power, I'll open up the clutch. If I feel like I need to put my foot down, clutch out. All right, guys, warm up exercise, short starts and stops. Put up, whoa. Nice, that's how I want your foot coming down. Put up. Nice, one more, Jerry. All right, good job, Jerry, you can go walk. Now, Jerry does like an exercise number three thing. He picks up his foot before the bike's moving. That's just Jerry practicing. All right, that's 10. All right, remember, head and eye straight ahead. Preload that throttle. Slowly release the clutch. Foot up. That's just because you just got here and jumped on the bike. You still got, you got to get reacclimated to the clutch. Good. Nice stop. One more. All right, a little less speed, so let's try one more. Open it up, then pull it back in. Foot up, pull it in. Good, good. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. You go, Paul. Good job. All right, Nicole.
all right? All right, I want you to start off a little bit slower. Right now, your handlebars are straight as an arrow. And if they're straight, that means you're going too fast. All right, still too much speed. And I think now the front brake grab. Free low, foot up. Wow, you're killing it, you're killing it. Head and eye straight ahead, foot up. So when you come to a stop, I want you to stay in the friction zone all the way until you stop. Because right now, when you're coming to a stop, you're falling into that stop. Okay? Free low. Other foot up. Pull the clutch in. Pull it in. All right, let it back out. Friction zone, friction zone. Rear brake, rear brake. See, now right. That's, and it's, you're still grabbing that front brake? Yeah. And then how, how can I tell I can't see it? The whole front. All right? Okay, you can go, Park. All right, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake. Good, good. Not bad at all. Head and eye, straight ahead. All right, try it again. Drag the rear brake. Don't stab at it. Not bad at all. One more. Outstanding. Good job, man. Guys, yeah, that was outstanding. Um, I'm going to talk to him a little bit about this, but this is so important. Uh, like I was saying earlier, all of them turned, when they showed up and they made that turn, the turn looked good, but the way that turn ended, it didn't look good. Front brake grabs, two feet down. This is where this comes in. It's, a, it's applicable whether you're going straight or coming out of a turn. All right, we'll talk about it. All right. Any questions on that? Okay, so I'm just going to briefly show you what I'm talking about when I say I want you to go into the friction zone. Nicole at first speed. Her handlebars were straight as an arrow, and I don't want your handlebars straight in that exercise because the bike's doing the work. If I see this, I know you're dealing with it. Kevin, that was beautiful, man. Just beautiful. The stops, Kevin was stopping like this. So sometimes people do that as a timing mechanism. He'll put his foot out like this, and then as the bike's stopping, 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 his heel hits the floor. By the time the rest of his foot hits the floor, He's done. Perfect. Nicole, the stops. Nicole is still the front braking, so that's 30 push-ups she owes me right now. Right? <laughs> it's because, again, when you feel that uh-oh, your first instinct is to do that. Right? And, again, that disturbs the motorcycle. Right? And it takes the smoothness out of it. So I want you to listen to my throttle as I'm coming to the stop. I know, I know. <laughs> Keeping, I'm staying in the friction zone until I stop. Now, you know, it's funny. Sometimes when I'm coming to a stop, I don't need to do that, and I'll still do it because I don't even want the motorcycle to get to the point where I will start feeling falling. So I'll just give it a little bit of power. Not much. A little bit. Yeah. Open the clutch up into the friction zone just a little bit just to keep me good. Now, again, sometimes the situation, the road, it might make it so I have to give it more. I'm not saying I do this all the time, but that's what I mean when I say we, we're in our feelings while we're riding. It's a feel thing. You do what you need to do based on what you feel. All right? All right. Next exercise, guys, is exercise number one. This is stops and starts. Now, the reason I do this exercise, for two reasons. One, um, I want you to be in the habit of, because we're going to go up to second gear in this. This is not about speed. So we're not doing 45 miles per hour. This is not a, a emergency braking. But I do want you to be accustomed to when you initially start to brake, you're going to be braking with your front brake because we're going to be going more than 10 miles per hour. And at the same time or around that time, I want you to downshift from second gear to first gear. I'm going to be standing here. Treat me as a stop sign. So it's not like it's a surprise that you're stopping. So you shouldn't come at me and stop like this. When you stop at me, you should be stopping the same way we stopped there. So this is you coming out of speed, transitioning 
at the end of that from the front brake to the rear brake only. So when I say transition, I don't want you to transition when you're still going 15 miles per hour. You could transition right before the stop, right? Because, and when I'm stopping, sometimes I do that. I'll be on the front brake, front brake. When I get less than 10 miles per hour, I'm always off of the front brake because I just don't need it anymore, right? And like I was telling uh, Kevin, when he, was, when he first started on the motorcycle, his bike was going like this. And it's because he's doing this. With his... So remember, we want to drag the rear brake. Apply gentle pressure and just hold it there. You don't need to do this, right? That's going to happen every now and then, but try not to do that. Because again, we're disturbing the bike. All right? Questions? Is everybody clear? About... Every time I have this practice session and I say, is everybody clear about this? Somebody does something crazy, flies right by me. All right? So, all right. Are we good? I'll move my bike and we'll do it. Hey guys, we're going to be doing exercise number one. And I said I had Nicole blocked in, but I don't, see? This is what I mean when I say practicing gives you options. And she's short too, so her trying to back her bike up and it's a little bit of an upgrade, that's not even an option for her. But because she practices, in her mind, just turn the handlebars, make a turn. Beautiful. All right, got Jerry coming. And again, this is not about speed. I'm a stop sign. Nice, Jerry. Park right here. Got Nicole next. Beautiful. All right, got Kevin coming. You're still on it. <laughs> I put you on the downshifting, but not when I came to the Yeah, down. downshifting. When you yeah. get to the end, transition to the rear only. You got to do it again. Yep. All right, that bike sounds good. All right, this is Willis. Willis was tardy for the party, so that's why we don't have an interview for him. This is the speed I really want you coming, because it's a stop sign. Why would you speed to a stop sign? Good job, you can park. Did you use the front brake at all? Yeah, right there. Okay, good. Good job. Not much. All right, nice. That Roadmaster sounds good. All right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number two, slow ride. All right, any questions on that? You guys did that great, right? Very. I mean, today's going to be a breeze. I love it. All right, uh, moving on, exercise number two, the slow ride. I love doing the slow ride. And I know you do this all the time. If you ride and practicing, um, it comes in all the time, right? No duck walking. So same thing, you guys are gonna go down there, you're gonna ride toward me. I'm gonna be up at that first cone though. Ride toward me at a normal speed. And again, I want you to come to a smooth stop. Always practicing that. Then I'm gonna say, are you ready? Bam. I want you to do this with no rear brake. This is only clutch, all right? So this is just gonna practice a little bit of clutch control. Um, again, you could do this in one of three ways. You can open up the clutch and then pull it right back in. And if you have enough momentum to stay up, fine. And if you feel like you need something, open, close. Because you're not, I, don't pass me. So if I don't want you to pass me as I'm walking, you open the clutch up too long, you don't have any brake to slow down, you're gonna wind up passing me. And we got sort of a downhill here, so just keep that in mind, all right? Or you can stay in the friction zone and drag the brake the whole time if you want. I mean, it's not gonna be a long distance. Uh, or you could do a little bit of both, okay? However you wanna do it, questions? Remember, ride to me, stop at a normal speed. Then we'll do the slow ride. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, exercise number two, slow ride. Nice, ready? All right, no break. Let's do it. All right, rear brake, come to a smooth stop. Good job, park right there. That wasn't bad at all.
Beautiful. Oh my God, it just looks beautiful. All right, you ready? No rear brake. All right, let's do it. Don't even cover it. Foot on the board. Head and eye, straight ahead. Excellent, Nicole, excellent. All right, rear brake, smooth stop. Beautiful. Paul, go over there. And the reason I don't have them cover the rear brake and then go to it is a lot of the times when I do that, people smash at it. But they were smooth. All right, ready? No rear brake. All right, let's do it. Off the brake. That's right, work it out. Ah, you passed me. You got to do it again. Go around. Don't want you to pass me. And this is not, I'm, I'm doing it in a short amount of space too. So, and I'm not walking like a ridiculous slow speed too. I'm working at a normal pace. All right, you ready? All right, let's do it. Whoa, you passed me. Too much clutch in the beginning. Do it again, Kev. So he, he passed me right away. I, again, I want that whole purpose of it is that, yeah, I want you to feel a little uncomfortable, but I want you to work it out. All right, ready? Let's do it. Off the brake. Good. Good. All right, rear brake, smooth stop. Friction zone, friction zone. Yeah, see? And that's why, see how your foot came down like that? Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good job, you can park. Especially when you're coming out of something like that, the handlebars are turn, you need to go into the friction zone. All right, ready? All right, let's do it. Pull the clutch in, pull it in, pull it in, otherwise you're gonna pass me, there we go. All right, rear brake, smooth stop. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Outstanding, man. Go ahead and pull. <laughs> All right, one thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about, and it involves stopping with the handlebars turn. Let's do it. Outstanding, guys. So, this is why I love practice sessions, and I love you guys for coming out and participating. Not only are you helping yourselves out, but you're helping out people that watch these videos because somebody's gonna see themselves in you for whatever the reason, right? And again, if I just did videos of me doing practice sessions, please, that's not gonna interest anybody really for long because yeah, of course, but uh, to see all different people come out here at all different skill levels and practice this stuff. But I always pick up stuff from you guys too. This is why no practice session is the same, even though all the exercises are the same because we got different people out here. So when the, in this exercise, I tell you not to use your rear brake right? And then I tell you, okay, rear brake, smooth stop. The reason I do that is because a lot of the times people will smash at it because they weren't covering it, right? You guys were smooth. So really surprising. What uh, Willis did is when I said, okay, smooth stop, he's already going like this. So if I tell you to stop, you can't, don't stop with the handlebars turn. In that moment, yes, you need to friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, because what does power always want to do to your handlebars? Straighten them out because power, this bike is designed to stand up and go straight with power. So as, as long as we know that, that's the answer. All right. Other than that, outstanding. Outstanding. I give you guys an A. Almost a plus. Almost a plus. All right. It's trust and believe time. Nicole, do you trust and believe that as long as you provide sufficient power to the rear wheel of this Harley Davidson, that it's not going to fall? Here, but not in my accent. Exactly. How about you? Same thing? <laughs> I know you trust and believe. You trust and believe? Okay, okay, good. So that's what this exercise is for. And again, all the other stuff that we talk about practicing while we're riding, this is really not one of them. I'd rather you be in a controlled environment, even though Jerry was doing exercise number three in the warm-up exercise. But see, you know, that's what I mean when I say we all have different things we're working on. It's because step number five is as soon as the bike starts to move, pick up your foot. Now, I don't want your foot to be doing this because it's already moving. As soon as it starts to move, pick up your foot. It doesn't have to be in haste, but just pick it up. Jerry was doing this. Okay, now I'm going to move. And that's all we're doing here. And this exercise is important. So many people that 
do this exercise, it, it doesn't make them feel comfortable right out the gate. That's a mental thing, right? Because, well, 99% of this is mental. Uh, because we know, we already talked about it, we discussed it, we, we voted on it, and we had a unanimous decision that with sufficient power, it's going to stand up. Yet we still feel like putting our foot down because the bike's not moving at all now, right? So, a couple of ground rules. The purpose of this exercise is not to see how long you can balance the bike after you pick your foot up. That's when I see people doing this, right? As soon as you pick up your foot, if it, happens to, if it happens to be as soon as you pick up your foot and you feel falling, you're in the exercise. Do what you got to do. Open up the clutch. Again, if you address it as soon as you feel it, it's a small movement. Um, also, I've also made a modification to this. No longer am I going to wait for you to decide to pick up your foot. <laughs> I'm going to say foot up. I keep forgetting to bring my whistle because I was going to go. Shh. I'm going to say foot up. And sometimes people say up yours when I say foot up because nothing happens. As soon as you hear foot up, pick up your foot. Don't, don't worry about anything else because it's not about you feeling right first. I don't want you to feel right. That's the whole purpose of this. I say this all the time. Airline pilots that go into a flight simulator, when they fly from point A to point B, it's never going to be just a smooth flight. What are they going to learn? Something has to go wrong and they have to react appropriately. That's what this is. So I want you to feel a little uncomfortable. By, by the way, I forgot to say, we're doing 13 different things out here today. Well, 13 different things are out here. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to do them all. There's never any pressure to do anything you don't feel comfortable doing. Of course, I want you to step outside your comfort zone a little bit, but sometimes I can see something in you that you don't. So I might say, do me a favor, try this. And even though you're going, oh, hell no, just trust me, okay? I'm not, gonna, I'm not out here to push people past their, extremely past their comfort zone because this is about building confidence. Confidence is key. What are the three C's of preloadination, Nicole? <laughs> Consistency, yes. Confidence, control, and consistency. And confidence is always first because everything follows that. All right? Control, I want you to be in control of your motorcycles at all times, fast and slow. Uh, and consistency. And we're going to talk about the consistency later. Okay? All right. I'm going to demonstrate it for you guys. And remember, at the end of it, smooth stop. All right? Smooth stop. Uh, not an emergent stop. So just take your time. Make sure you're in this moment you have time. So don't worry about it. Okay? All right. Step number one, make sure the bike's in first gear. Step number two, we're going to cover the rear brake. Step number three, preload the throttle and keep it loaded. This is when, and keep it loaded is so important. Step number four differs now, but it still involves the clutch. I want you to bring the clutch right before the friction zone. So how do we find that? I want you to open up the clutch, light on the rear brake so your bike can move. As soon as you feel it start to move, pull it just, just in. And that's because step number five, I want you to pick your foot up without the bike moving a millimeter. I'm always going to be looking at the tread in your tires. And if I see it move even a little bit, I'm going to tell you, you're moving. Trust it. And I'm going to say, foot up. Pick up your foot. Boom. And again, even if you pop your clutch, which you shouldn't have to, but even if that happens, that's why we're covering the rear brake. All right? Now, if the bike starts to fall and you address it as soon as you feel it, you're barely going to see anything. The, the craziness is when you wait long. That's when you feel, ah, and the bike, everybody's looking, is nervous. But if you do it right, people won't even, they won't even notice it. You ready? Don't forget to come to a smooth stop. All right, let's do it. Foot up. Ah, you were moving. Stop. Head and eyes, Jerry. Head and eyes. Don't stop with those handlebars turn. All right. Foot up. Excellent, Jerry. Exercise number four. No, no, no. The red bikes go first. Make sure you're straight. Nice stop. All right. You practice this? Yes, and I, it's always been really difficult for me. <laughs> I don't know that I've accomplished it but a couple times, but I'm usually doing the toe thing. Yeah, I love 
when I see people come here and their shoulders go. <laughs> Whatever you got to do to get ready. First gear? I'm in first gear. Okay, cover the rear brake. Yeah. Preload that throttle. And keep it there. Head and eye straight ahead. Clutch right before the friction zone. Foot up. Full stop, full stop. So yeah, you put your foot back down, but then when you did it, you did it. So let's okay. do it again. Okay. All right, preload. Preload, preload, you're not preloading. There we go. Foot up. Foot. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. And your foot went like this, but you never put it down. Head over there, good job. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Whoever, it doesn't matter. That was good. That was good. All right. Hey, Jerry, don't forget I got water in there if you need it. Same thing for you, Willis. All right, you ready? First gear. Covering the rear brake. Good. Preload that throttle. Checking my bike for me? Oh, thanks, man. Clutch right before the friction zone. Foot up. Smooth stop. Dude, who are you? That was excellent. I don't know. The other guy you saw, I don't know. That was excellent, man. Yeah, yeah, good job. There you go. All right, keep that foot on the board until you're ready to stop. But I like the fact that. want him to do it again because I want him to do it smoother. That wasn't bad at all. Got to work on the head and eyes. Shout out to Jerry for taking my bike down there because guys, I'm getting my steps in. Friction zone, friction zone, friction zone. Straighten out. Yeah, so when you're coming around that turn, you ain't going to be able to straighten out if you're not in the friction zone. Or right? well, it's going to be difficult, more difficult. All right. Good. Right before the friction zone. Good, keep it loaded. Foot up. There we go, smooth stop. Outstanding, good job. Head down there. <laughs> so Kevin said his leg was cramping up, but he did outstanding, good job. And that's why I wanted him to do it again. Again, like I said, it's all about building confidence out here. So if you don't, I know we, I know we all wanna do stuff smoothly, um, and if I see you're struggling with it, I'm not going to have you keep doing it. Uh, but if I see you just need to make a quick modification and you need a, another round of it, I'm always going to give you that. All right. Right turns, left turns from a stop, guys. So you can tell, you know, knowledge is power. I say that all the time. Um, and you can tell that this is not the first time Nicole has done any type of, you know, practice, training, whatever. That's why she knows this stuff will wear you out. So people that want to do a long ride and then practice and then ride home the same day, I'm not saying nobody can't do it, but yeah, it's a lot, especially if it's hot out and stuff like that, you know. Anyway, outstanding. Nicole, you, you, you're sandbagging already. She's like, yeah, you know, I don't, you can't do this. Did beautifully, right? Um, all, of you guys, all of you guys did well. I got, I got a good feeling about this group today, I'm telling you. All right, exercise number four, guys. Right turns, left turns from a stop. I say it all the time. This is the highest failure rate out of everything out here. I'm not gonna have an issue with it today, I can tell. Right, and then how, I, how can I tell? I already said it in the, on the camera. I told Nicole, all right, listen, stand by, I'm gonna move my motorcycle, I got you blocked in. And then, when I walked away and I looked back, I looked at how much room was there. To my eyes, ah, oh, she's got plenty of room. But, it all depends on how, where she is as a rider. And this is what I mean when I say practicing gives us options. So what tools does she have in her tool belt? Her vision is gonna be different. 
So somebody else would go, man, I'm going to wait for him to move this bike. Or I'm going to back up. Now, again, when you're vertically challenged, you really it's really going to benefit you to know how to ride these bikes at slow speeds because she ain't trying to back that bike up. It's already an upgrade, uphill, right? So all she did was made a right turn. Beautiful. I saw it. I see everything. I saw. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay because, again. Just because there was something that was, like, mm -hmm. adding a little extra. Um, Distraction or attention. Attention. Worry. Nerves. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. this mess is going to make a bigger mistake than that. Yes. So, yeah. I did tap my toe. I'm glad she said that because that's why I made that video on practicing is important, yes. But practicing with cones is even more important because you have to give yourself boundaries it's going to help you under, it's going to help you learn what you can do in a certain amount of space to the point where you can eyeball it and know I can do this or I can do that. But this was a focal point for Nicole. So this it distracted her a little bit. When really if she turns her head in her eyes and, and puts power to that rear wheel, wherever the handlebars are turned, that's where the bike's going to go, right? But that's why we're out here. When you guys do this exercise first, I'm just going to have you we're going to do Let's start here. What's your strength? Right turns or left turns? Um, my left turns. Your left turns. Jerry? Yeah, left. Mm hmm Kevin? I think left. Left? I think I learned that my right is actually Yes, my... <laughs> yes. Because Willis came out here for a private lesson with me, and Willis rides a gold wing, and he rented Angel. And I told him, dude, when you get off this bike, you're going to get a Hawley. Because sure enough, he's not used to his handlebars turning this much, Right. So anyway, that is liberating, especially if you ride like this, if you're proficient in riding like this. What I've learned is when I ask people what their strength is, they're answering the question for U-turns. Why? Because most people won't turn like this. This is duck walk city, right? Because this involves being in the friction zone. Now, when you guys come through here, I don't want the bike leaning at all. I want you to make this turn straight up, right? Now, again, the reason I know this is not going to be an issue today is I watched all the... Well, specifically you two and you pulled up just like that that's all this is you didn't lean you were straight up that's all this is right so the first time you go through I want you to go straight through the goal is to be in the middle of this lane now yeah it's the highest failure rate moving when I when we do it from a stop that's when people really you know but that's why we did that exercise first and that's why when Nicole was moving too fast or when Kevin was moving too fast I said I need you to slow down because when you get here and you have to do it from a stop, now we have to make a turn like right away. You don't have room to be going fast. And if you're going fast, what does speed do to our handlebars? So it's going to widen our turns. And we don't want a wide turn here. Again, if you're right here, that's fine. If you're right here, that's fine. You just got to work on it. We're finding out where you are and what you need to do to tighten that turn. Okay? Um, and then at some point, I'm going to have you do it from a stop. Here's the box. When I do this exercise, I stop right here. Sometimes I stop here, and sometimes I stop here. You can stop wherever you want, wherever you're comfortable. I'm in the middle. If you want to stop all the way to the right to make the left, no problem. Left to the right, no problem. The goal is to, at some point, get you here. Because sometimes you're going to stop someplace out there, and you can't see around what you need to see from back here. So you're going to have to go out here Look, look, look again, and then make this turn from here, right? We'll talk about it. Now, again, this is not a competition. I tell people that all the time. So out there in the real world, if you feel more comfortable keeping your feet down while you do it, that's fine. But just keep a mental note. That just means you need, you got more work to do, right? Because if your, your confidence is still not there. Now, we all learn differently. So don't think, well, what the hell? I've been practicing every weekend. Why am I not getting this yet? You might need more than every weekend. You might need every weekend. You might need every day. If you ride every day, you should be practicing it. Definitely, right? And then you got some people that come out here and they just, they just get it, you know? So don't frustrate yourselves. I always ask all of you in the beginning, how often do you practice? Nobody's out here saying, I practice all the time. So if you are not confident in certain things, you are where you should be, right? If you practice all the time and you're not getting it, now you can get frustrated, okay? So be easy on yourself. And remember, perfection doesn't exist. Not out here, not anywhere. I know we always want everything to be perfect. It's just not going to happen. All right? All right. 
And then I'm going to have you guys stop, make this turn, and stop. Again, the goal is to be in the middle, stop smoothly. Make sure you straighten out those handlebars when you stop. When Kevin was coming around to do that exercise number three again, he stopped with his handlebars turned. Why? Because he's coming out of a turn and he's going at a slow speed. You're not going to, it's going to be more difficult to straighten out the handlebars without power. So same thing, coming to a stop, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, friction zone, friction zone, bing. All right. All right. One to two miles per hour, because if you go any faster, I guarantee you, you're going to lean this bike. If I see even a little bit of a lean, I'm going to tell you, you're leaning. Do it again. Do it again. So, a couple of things. When we're doing it, not from a stop, but just going straight through. When you're approaching this, remember the speed you were doing in exercise number two, the slow ride? That's the speed I want you to do on the approach. And once you get that speed and you're good, wherever you are in the friction zone, keep it there. Wherever your preload is, keep it there. And if you're dragging the rear brake already, whatever pressure you're giving it, stay there. Don't change anything. That's the issue. People start... Especially once we start turning the handlebars, people get freaked out and they start changing shit. And that's when stuff goes wrong. So I'm not saying you won't have to make any changes, but whatever changes you make are very minimal, right? So I'm in the, I'm in the friction zone as I'm coming up. I'm dragging the rear brake, head and eyes, handlebars. When I start to turn, nothing changes. If I feel like I'm falling in, opening up the clutch will fix that. Opening it up too much will take me here. So what happens is this is where people go, oh, crap. And... I understand this is what you want to do when you feel, uh-uh, they pull the clutch all the way in and this is where they drop or they go, oh crap, and they go out here. I don't care if you hit a cone, just don't put your foot down. Oh, I was so happy to see Nicole's foot go like this, you know, because that's when you, that's fighting an instinct and winning that battle, right? That's where it starts. That's what, I always use that, that phrase from uh, the Matrix when Morpheus said he's beginning to believe. You're beginning to believe it. You're getting to trust it. And the way you trust this is you have to be in situations all the time and feel that and address it. And the beauty of it is every time I do it, it works. So if every time you do something that works, you're going to trust it, right? And, you, and once you trust and believe that that's the answer and this is going to help you correct and control, the sky's the limit to what you could do. The sky's the limit. And nice. Nice, Jerry. Get that foot up right away and keep it up, Nicole. Head and eyes, look at my camera, keep looking at it. Outstanding, Nicole, outstanding. Head and eyes, look at my camera. All right, good job. Cover that rear brake. Head and eyes, look at my camera. Keep that power on the rear wheel. Nice and easy, good. Easy on that rear brake. Good job. Good job. Same thing, Jerry. Same thing. Same thing. Straight through. Head and eyes, look at the camera. Nice.
you guys are new and you didn't notice, Jerry's a throttle blipper, so his bike's going to be doing this. Straight through. Good. Just outstanding. Nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. You don't hear her over revving. Her, her RPMs are at the perfect, perfect uh, level for this exercise and for that motorcycle. Camera. Nice and easy on that rear brake. All right. Good. Keep the speed up. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Yeah, you're smashing at the rear brake. Okay? So don't, when you make that turn, whatever speed you're at, just stay there, Kevin. Don't change anything. And if you need anything, you make a small change. Right now, every time you feel, uh-oh, you're doing that. All right. All right, straight through, Jerry. And see, the only reason Jerry's not in the middle right there is when he was right here, he's a throttle blipper. When he was right here, he popped his clutch and that pushed him out. That's the only reason he was over here. Wherever you want to stop, smooth stop. Fix his own, fix his own, rear brake, rear brake. I'll take it. <laughs> I know. Okay. Don't forget. Head, your, actually, your head and eyes is fine. It's not even the issue. Nothing changes here, Nicole. Nothing changes here. So, what I will say is, when it's first, this initial takeoff is what gets people. Uh -huh. If you feel like you, if you want to open up the clutch a little quicker just to get that bike to stand up and then pull it back in, not all the way in, but in, that'll be good too. Because sometimes that's the issue. As soon as people pick up their foot, they feel full and it freaks them out. Or they pick up their foot like this. And it kicks the bike to the right and they wind up going that way. Preload. Foot up. Foot up. Head nice. Sandbagging again. <laughs> Wherever you want to stop. Nicola, the sandbagger. Nice. All right. I was about to say, you good up there? Yeah, left turn, straight through. You just got to start turning sooner, that's all. No, but you got plenty of room. Speed, that's what took you out, but you're good. Plus, you're looking down at those cones. Wherever you want to stop. All right, you're not following the first five steps, Kevin. You're starting with both your feet out. Straight through, Kevin. Don't forget about the head and eyes. Good. Keep that speed. Head and eyes. Rear brake, rear brake. All right, I'll take it. Kind of making them fight. A little bit too much rear brake. All right, come to a smooth stop, Jerry. See, throttle blip, throttle blip. Smooth stop. <laughs> nice job, man. Right turns next. All right, <laughs> come to a smooth stop over here. I don't have to say much to Nicole. The head and eyes are good, right here. <laughs> Everything is good at the end, and that's just be, and that's again, that's gonna come. Yeah, it's just because of the friction zone at the end. That's all you need. That's what's gonna make the bike. Without it, yeah, you feel that. Right turns next. Good job. Very good job. All right, no big deal. Just putting the foot down a little early. Come to a smooth stop. We we did this, so you're good. All right, I'll take it. The only issue there is you started turning way too late, so you had to leave, but. And you never put a foot down. That's all I care about. Good job. Right turns next. Get that foot up. Good. Smooth stop. Friction zone. Friction zone. Oh, smooth stop, Kevin. 
All right, you coming to a smooth stop over here. You're coming to a smooth stop over here. Once this bike starts moving, just keep that speed. You don't have to change that. You're good. Easy on that rear brake. Easy on that rear brake. Keep it turned. Power. Easy, easy. All right. Good job. Too much speed, too much speed, you're leaning. That nice. All right, got some lean there, got some lean there. But he looks better right than left. Straight through, Jerry, straight through. That nice. Good. You're up to like 70 push-ups now. I know, it's, it is so habit. And I'm I know. trying to tell myself to stop using it. The only reason why your turn is that wide, because you're turning late. Yeah. So if you turn a little bit early, you'll be right in the middle. But you don't, I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying if you want to. You're looking good. Let's do it again. Straight through. Very nice. Very nice. Straight through. Slow down, too much speed. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. You didn't have the handlebars turned enough. That's why you did that at the last minute, but it was good. He was barely turning the handlebars. He still would have made the turn, but he would have been all the way at the cones. Remember, the goal is to be in the middle. Good, stay at that speed. Good, start turning. Keep power to the rear wheel, easy on the rear brake. Keep it turned, keep it turned. Trust and believe. Good job. All right, straight through, Jerry. All right. Have a trust and believe moment. Wherever you want to stop. Come up some more. All right. Head nod. Nothing changes, Nicole. Excellent. Straight through. Right in the middle. Beautiful. Sandbagging. All right. Straight through. That nice. Look at the camera. You're looking down. Easy on that rear brake. Good. Straight through. Straight through. I don't know if you notice it, your rights are better than your lefts. I knew it. <laughs> All right, straight through. Good, 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 good. All right. His rights are way better than his left. All right, smooth stop, and then you can take a break. Nice. Good job. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Oh my God, the best stop of the day. Copy and paste, Nicole. All right, come to a smooth stop and then you can take a break. Your eyes are right here. Right there, I'm looking at you. All right, come to a smooth stop, then you can take a break. That happens. No big deal. Hold that turn. 
Yeah, you're coming out of me. Go, go over the clutch. Outstanding, man. Take a break. All right, so Kevin, what you're doing is when you start moving, you open up the clutch enough to get you straight. But then when you go to make the turn, you keep the clutch that same, you, you stay in the friction zone the same amount. It's too much. And then you're fighting it with the rear brake. That's why you're fighting that. So once you start moving, as soon as you go to make that turn, pull the clutch in a little bit. You don't need all of that power. Okay? Let's try that. Nice and easy. All right, good. Slow down, slow down. Start turning. Hold the turn. Friction zone. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Smooth stop. All right, try one more time. All right, we're coming to a smooth stop. Excellent, Nicole, take a break. All right, let's try this one more time. Come to a smooth stop. Good, stay with it. Good, smooth stop. All right, I'll take it. Take a break, buddy. All right, guys, we're gonna head on to exercise number five, single serpentine. These guys are great, right? Exercise number five, guys, welcome to it. Single serpentine. Kevin was already practicing it coming up. I like what I'm seeing. But I always keep in mind, Kevin's motorcycle turns like an aircraft carrier, right? So he's gotta make, he's gotta make different choices than we do. Sometimes sooner choices. Sometimes he's gonna have to lean more than we will have to, right? That's fine. That's why you have to practice on your motorcycle. So people say, yeah, I'll practice on this motorcycle and then go out and ride that motorcycle. They all are, yeah. Yeah. The handlebars stop right here. Whereas, you know, Harley goes all the way. Plus, the Pursuit has a longer wheelbase too, right? But the bigger issue are the handlebars, right? No big deal. All right, so guys, this exercise, single serpentine, these cones are now, I've been saying these cones are 15 feet for like three years now. They were at one point. When I got the higher cones, I never did re-measure the, and I just realized it, and I go out and measure, it was like 13 feet. <laughs> but, you know, it's still plenty of space, right? But now you have a true 15 feet, okay? Um, which is plenty of space for what we're doing here. Why is this exercise important? Because this exercise is now, up until now, we haven't done any leaning. Well, now I want some leaning. But this exercise involves leaning and turning the handlebars. Usually, if you're leaning, you're going at a speed where you can't turn like this, right? Because, I don't have to say because, you know why. But, so that's why this exercise is important because your speed has to be appropriate. If you're going too slow, you can't lean. If you're going too fast, you can't turn. So I need you in the middle. See how wide my bike is? I don't want you to hug these cones. Now what happens is I'll tell people, don't hug the cones and they'll start wide and then eventually they start hugging the cones because everybody wants to do this, right? It's not about speed, it's about fluidity, right? Consistency. So just like I told you guys, as you're approaching that, exercise number two, whatever speed you were, keep it there. But we're not gonna be going that slow, but once you find an appropriate speed in here, if you just stay at that speed and manipulate this bike, turn the handlebars and lean, it's all about the fluidity. Keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. You guys are gonna be coming this way. All right, keep your head and your eyes straight. Look right at my camera. Your peripheral vision will pick up the cones. And remember, staying wide is also gonna give you space and time. If you stay straight, if I keep the bike straight, I have to wait until I'm past this cone so I can really start turning. Whereas if I approach it like this, as soon as I get here, I'm already gonna start my next turn. Because you wanna be as close to this cone, close. Because if I'm, if I'm all the way up here making the turn, it's gonna get tighter as I go up. Not a big deal. You probably just have to slow down, lean more, turn more, whatever. But that's the exercise. Any questions? I'm gonna do a quick demo, and then you guys are gonna head down there you're gonna come back this way. So as soon as I start, I'm gonna dip. 
Dip. And guys, transition. Don't transition slow because you're losing space. Transition, transition, transition. in there but I'm always covering it because if I need it quick correction all right all right let's do it all right we got Jerry going first very nice I always forget to tell him don't worry about the last turn between my camera and the cone Good, Nicole. Very good. There we go. Willis here. Slow down. Slow down. Too much speed. You're hitting cones. First time through, and that's what I say, guys. People want to come through here fast, and that's not the exercise. It's not about speed. Head and eye, straight ahead. So you barely turn right there. Too much speed. Good correction. Just gotta lean that bike in. But right there, he's going too slow, so he can't lean. You don't want to slow down too much. Nice, Jerry. Go ahead and eye, straight ahead. Very nice. Nice and wide. Dip it. Good. Dip it. Turn it. Good. Turn it. Slow down. Too much speed. Good. Turn it. There we go. Dip it. Good. Good job. Good job. There we go. That's what I like to see. One more time. One more time. Jerry, one more time. Too close to the cones. Keep it wide. Good. There we go. Lean it in. Good. There we go. One more time, Jerry. Start over there. Nice and wide. See how wide it's coming in? Good. Nice. Very nice. Good. Keep it wide, Kevin. Keep it wide. Good. Lean it in. Good. Lean it in. Good. Ain't too slow. Can't really lean there. But he worked it out. Good job, baby. Excellent. All right, guys, we're just, we're just pushing right along here. Exercise number six, infamous U-turn. You guys are doing outstanding. Mm -hmm. Practice, practicing the slow speed stuff 
that's what you need when you're short. Because everybody, once the bike's moving, you ain't worried about your height because your feet are on the boards or the pegs. Um, and so that's what it's all about. Oh my God, I gotta do a video on that because it's so relevant. I might have to rent you for <laughs> a video because it's one thing for me to talk about the height, but to actually watch her do what she, everything she does, getting on the bike, getting off the bike, turning the bike. Oh, I forgot to ask you, Nicole, did you name the cones as you were going down since you stared at each one of them? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I kept forgetting to tell her the next time, Nicole had knives, but how do I know? Because she, when she turns, her head stays in the middle. She's like. But, you know, listen. And Willis, I was telling Willis, stop, stop. He doesn't see me because he's like this. This is why we want to keep. I love when stuff like that happens because, again, sometimes you can hear something until you're blue in the face. No, that's wrong. It's saying something until you're blue in the face. You can hear something all the time and it never gets there until you actually feel it or experience it. Our experiences are what really bases us. You know, that's why I always say, don't just ignore the person that's younger than you thinking you know more because you're older. What have you been through versus what have they been through? You know, my life for the most part has been pretty easy. This kid probably been on his own since he was 10. So who has more life experience? You know, all right. You know what? Come in, come in here, guys. I want you guys to be in the video as much as possible. Plus, I don't feel like yelling at you. Go all the way to the top of this, the U-turn. Guys are like superheroes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this in the video and put some music to it. Slow motion with you guys walking. <laughs> you laughing, watch, I'm gonna do it. All right, any questions on the single serpentine? You guys did great. Again, some of this is, Kevin, some of this with you is clutch control. Sometimes you're going a little bit too fast. Um, and then at the end, you wind up going so slow that you can't lean the bike, but you still worked it out, man. You're working it out. And, and listen, that's good. I always tell people that come here, if you struggle doing that, I want you to understand how important it is that you need to be comfortable doing that. And you need to practice it because, again, if you don't have that in your tool belt, when old crap happens, and, and remember, when everything is working out, everybody's a superstar. When the crap hits the fan, what are you gonna do? And if all you know is squeeze and hope for the best, that's what you're gonna do. And you might not, it might not work, but you didn't have the presence of mind to swerve. Swerving would have worked if you're going, the whole point is when we're going fast, we can't turn, but once we break, we'll get into that speed range where we can swerve. But if you don't have the presence of mind to do that, it's just not gonna happen, right? And just thinking about it and not practicing it, it ain't gonna get in there. Everybody loves to think that they would, they're gonna do this when this happens. If you don't have any practice, it's like anything else. You gotta be prepared for this. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Exercise number six, you guys have been surprising me all day, so I don't think this should be any different. This is the infamous U-turn. Three parking spaces. Nicole's been sandbagging all day too, by the way. So she told me she's at 26 feet. I told her today we're gonna get 24. Why she end up in 18? I'm kidding. But you never know, right? Cause she's a sandbagger. Um, I'm giving you 27 feet, guys, but I prefer you be in 24. But I'm giving you 27 because I want you to use it if you need it. You don't need it. I'm, even the aircraft carrier doesn't need it, right? And what am I talking about? What, what determines the radius of a turn on the motorcycle, Nicole? Mm-hmm. And three things. Handlebars. That's right. So uh, when Nicole said is what speed, I'm glad she said speed first because it's the number one contributing factor to wide turns. Right? Matter of fact, in exercise number four, Jerry was making a nice turn, straight up. And then you, you, Jerry's a throttle blipper. So one of his blips took his bike like this. That's the only reason his turn was wider. So it doesn't have to be a lot of speed. A small increment of too much speed will make your turn wider. So again, now we're talking about the same thing I talked about in exercise number four, people changing things. As you're approaching this U-turn, if you're at an appropriate speed, eight to 10 miles per hour is fine. What comes first, Willis, head knives or handlebars? That's right, and then, so I don't wanna see head knives and handlebars at the same time, because now it might be too late. Head and eyes, oh crap, there's a truck. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, stop, right? Head and eyes, handlebars. I need you guys to, one, commit to the lean right away, because as soon as you turn your head and eyes and you turn the handlebars, you should be starting your lean. 
commit to it right away. So what I find is a lot of people will come in here, and as soon as it's time to turn, they slow down. They get gun shy. And because they slow down, now they can't lean, right? Keep your speed appropriate. I also don't want you going so fast that you're swooping through this turn. The friction zone should be pulling you through this turn just like it pulls you through everything else, right? So if you're coming up in the friction zone already, just stay there unless you're going too fast. But you need to be able to judge that as you're approaching. Head knives, handlebars. Guys, I want you to give me 50-50. I don't need you dragging the footboards. I don't need you locking your handlebars. Give me 50% handlebar turn, 50% lean. And if you commit to that lean right away, you're going to be in 24 feet very easily. Very easily, right? Head and eyes, handlebars. Commit and hold it. Stay there. Hold, don't change anything. Hold it. Keep your head and your eyes looking wherever the hell you were looking. Hold it. Hold it. Then come out. Once you come out, if you want to start opening up the clutch, that's fine. But once you commit to this turn, in the middle of that U-turn, don't change anything. Because if, you, if the friction zone was enough to bring you here without any issues, why would it change because you're turning? Just keep it where it is and trust that it's fine. If you need rear brake, drag it. Don't do this, okay? All right, I'm gonna do a demo. What speed do you think I should be doing if I do wanna do this and drag my footboards and just go in a circle? What speed should I be going? What do you think? Eight, 10, what do you think? Yeah, it's seven to eight. I'm talking about if I want to stay right here, seven to eight. Ten is too fast. Ten is for the whole U-turn, all right? So I'm going to do a U-turn for you guys, and then I'm going to come in here and just, I'm just going to drag, you know, actually, I'll do it to the right. That way it won't drag as much because I'm killing my kickstand spring. All right, so this speed is good. Head nice. Now, did you see how kind of far out I went? I chose not to use a rear brake at all. Took me out a little wide. Now, if, I, if, if that's happening, if I just apply a little bit of rear brake, it makes a world of difference. I can drag my footboards, fully lock my handlebars, and I'm good. The only difference is at that speed and that lean, I can't really change anything if I want to stay there. If I slow down anymore, the bike's going to drop. If I open up the clutch, it's going to widen my turn. Now, again, that's extreme. So the point is, if I can do that at 8 miles per hour, 7 miles per hour, you certainly can do 24 feet at 7 miles per hour, 8 miles per hour, you don't, 9 miles per hour. You don't have to be going that slow. You don't have to be going that fast. We good? Don't change unless you need to, because we're in our feelings. So it all depends on what you're feeling, but sometimes that's not true, because sometimes your feelings are false. Sometimes your feelings are based on what you don't know, right? Getting in tune with this is also going to help you, because when you feel certain things, you're going to learn, I'm supposed to feel that in this circumstance, and here's how I handle it. So the first time you guys go through here, we're going to start with left turns. By the way, I know you said your lefts were your favorite. Negative. That happens all the time. People give me the U-turn answer. Over there, it's not the same. Your rights and your rights look better too. So, and the same, yeah. <laughs> First time you guys go through here, we're making a left turn straight through. Then, when I tell you, we're gonna come to a stop right at that green cone, and then we're gonna make a U turn from a stop. Then, stop, take the U turn, smooth stop, right? It's always a smooth stop, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing going right. Questions? Do it. Jerry's gonna be in here. Head nice. Nice.
Beautiful. That's 24, definitely. Nice. Good. Head nice. Hand the bars, head nice. All right, I'll take it. Straight through, Jerry, straight through. Head nice. Sandbagger! What are you shaking your head for? <laughs> she was going for that 18 feet. I saw her eyes. She's looking right at it. That was beautiful. All right, stop right there, Willis. All right, shut it off. What you're doing is when you're coming in here, you're lazily starting your turn. And then you don't actually turn the handlebars until you're about right there. That's the only reason you're that wide. Head and eyes, handlebars. Commit to the lean, right away, turn. All right. So you're looking good, though. Keep it lean. Lean it up. See, you're slowing down too much, Kevin. There you go. Work it out. Easy on that rear brake. All right, straight through. Nice. See right there, Jerry doesn't commit to that. He doesn't commit to the lean right away on that. He commits at the end, and that's why it's that swoop. No big deal. Are my eyes deceiving me? It looked like you were saying, I'm going in that 18 foot box. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I failed to mention, I totally forgot to tell you, it's an option, of course. So if you don't want to worry about these cones, just try it up there. If you don't make it, actually, that's what you did. I was trying to get deeper in, I don't know. Okay, so now that I know that, when you start going straight, I just need you to commit to that lean sooner. Commit that's to it. I, I, and then you're in there. First world problems. The fact that she's even going for it, I love it. She talked about 26 feet. No way. She's sandbagging big time. That's 20. All right, you turn. <laughs> straight through, straight through. And again, the only reason he's that wide. He's not committing, and if he is, he's barely turning the handlebars. I want 50%. He's giving me like 30. Smooth stop. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. All right, so what you're doing is when you're getting up to the top, you're slowing down too much, so you can't lean. But you're still working it out. Again, keep your speed up so that you can lean and hold it there. Giant, gentle pressure on that rear brake. Reload. Good up. Good. Head and eyes, handlebars, slow down. Head and eyes. He's not looking over here. All right. All right, come to a smooth stop. Right turns next. Commit, commit, commit. Good job. Is that the issue? Because Jerry's going first. You're looking at him and going, okay. Whatever it is. Yeah, right there, same thing. You're like. Yeah, it's, it's tough to get that lean right away. It just. Gotta trust it. That's all. That's all it is. Again, it's a first world problem. It's a, the 26 feet crap you told me earlier was just so much sandbagging. All right, you gotta come to a smooth stop. Okay. 
Oh my God. Smooth stuff. Oh my God. Smooth stuff. So, all right, shut that off. So I'm seeing what's going on. It's that initial turn. Because when you get in the turn, like as soon as you were about right here, all of a sudden I see the motor, you dip the motorcycle right there, and that's what puts you that close. If you just had a nice handlebar and did it right from the start, you're in 18 feet. Easy. Mental note. First world problems. She's doing excellent, man. But this is a result of practicing, going to classes, but not just going to them, continuing to practice after that. Smooth stuff. Now, the last time you went, again, you barely had the handlebars turn. I, again, I don't need 100, but I don't want 30. Give me 50, right? And you're well off the line, too, so that's fine. You don't need it all. That nice? See? No lean. Uh-huh. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake. Good. The only reason you're over there, no lean at all. And then, at the end, you lean. But, but the stop was smooth, man. Well, that's the same thing Nicole's going through. She's leaning late. All right, yeah, same thing. You're straight up instead of leaning. But you can still make the U-turn, so that's really all I care about. But the more you practice it, I want, it to be, I want you to be more comfortable doing it. Yeah. Yeah, so lean that bike over and just stay in the friction zone. You're going to be fine. All right, come to a smooth stop. And head and eyes, look at me. Come to me, look at me. Hold it. Easy on that rear brake. Smooth stop. Yeah, so you barely have the bars turn. It's because you, as soon as you get to the top, you slow down. So then you can't lean. All right, all right. Yep. You got it, brother. Good. Commit, commit. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Man, that's a thumbnail right there. And an eyes, commit. Hold the turn. Yeah, you love right turns. Good. Head and eyes. Hold the turn. So you're slowing down too much. Easy on there. There we go. Yeah, you love right turns too. Oh, coming right at my camera. Straight through, straight through. Good job. Head and eyes, commit, lean it over. You're looking at the ground. Next time you come through, I want you looking up. Good, head and eyes, commit, lean it over. Nice. Lean it over. Keep the power. Good. Good. Easy. Too much speed. I take it. Yeah, so he's definitely more comfortable. Definitely more comfortable going right. Definitely. All right. Straight through, Jerry. There you go. Stop looking at him! <laughs> okay, come on. Why my motivation? There you go. All right. So far, everybody that said their favorite was left is bullcrap. Right. All right, straight through. Commit to that lean right away. He's trusting. Head and eyes, turn it over. Head and eyes up. Good, good. All right, make sure you keep that speed consistent. You're looking good, man. Your rights are just so natural. Straight through. Yeah. Good, good. Clutch. Look at that. Holy shit. What is going on? You 
you are way more comfortable turning right than left. I mean, straight up and leaning. Because here, you really lean the bike. Left, you're very tentative, yeah. right? But remember, I don't want you to let speed take over. But you're still good, especially on this bike. You are excellent. Do that again. Nothing changes here. Head and eyes. Turn it, lean it, friction zone, lean it over. Good, good, good. There we go. You've got to commit to that lean early, and that's the thing. People are reluctant to lean it right away. They want to get comfortable first and then lean it. All right, come to a smooth stop and then just stand by right where my motorcycle is. Nice, Jerry. Oh, oh, all right. Come to a smooth stop and then stand by right where Jerry is. Head nice, look at me, look at me, look at me. You said screw you, I ain't looking at you. No, now you look at me. Smooth stop. So that turn, you're straight up the whole time. All right. That's a comfort zone thing. I told her, look at me, look at me. It's like I was, she said, screw you. I'm gonna look at this, whatever. The ground looks so nice to me right now. And when I get comfortable, then I'll look up at you. All right, beautiful. Come to a smooth stop. That was like an 18 foot U-turn right there, man. Outstanding, Willis. Outstanding. All right, come to a smooth stop. Keep that speed consistent. Head and eyes, look at me, come to me. Come on, keep it turned, keep it turned, keep it lean, straighten out, friction zone, friction zone. That's what I'm talking about, right there. All right, bring it in guys. All right, we got a lot of first world problems going on here, right, and that's fine. But the thing that I'm seeing in one, two, three, four different skill levels, what do they all have in common for what I'm seeing? Reluctancy to lean the bike right away, right? Now, the only one that to me seemed obviously is the scariest is Jerry's. Jerry's doing it in this. So Jerry doesn't lean right away. So what that does is when he gets about right here, now he's got to really lean the bike to stay in. And that's why you see that swoop at the end, right? Whereas if he leans it right away, um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not as stressful. But again, he finds a way to work it out. So again, that's a first world problem. So for the rest of you, I want you to think of it this way. You rocked Trust and Believe. You rocked it. Actually, you all did it well. All, all leaning the motorcycle right away is, is trusting and believing. You're trusting that if you feel like you're going to fall and you open up the clutch too much initially, you might go back and go, oh, I wasn't going to fall. I was fine. But you felt that feeling. Okay, let me go back and do it again. If you open up the clutch enough, that's why you're... That's why if you're doing it while you're moving, you're already in the friction zone. So you don't even have, you don't even have to think about it. You can lean the bike right there where you are. You don't, have to, you don't have to go more to lean. And you damn sure don't want to go less, right? So let me just show you this right quick. That's what they say down here in the South. I'm going to... takes time to practice and learn again this is extreme but it's relevant here too because again that's you guys have 27 feet to work with and you're still reluctantly turn leaning just go for it you're good as long as you got that power that's why i always tell people the preload helps because if you hear it you know it's there right we're on holly so we don't have the benefit of just it being idle and would be an okay unless you raised your idle my bike <laughs> Thank you.
If I look at my RPMs, the numbers is like this. So I'm never gonna lean this bike over trusting that. So I need to be, I need a steady preload, right? And once I have that, I hear it, I'm good. I know I'm good, I trust it. And that's what I want you guys to do. So when you're making your U-turns, I want you to commit to the lean. And here's the funny thing too. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say, sometimes I want people to step outside their comfort zone. Nicole started turning. I said, look at me, Nicole. Look at me. And Nicole said, screw you. This ground looks beautiful. So I'm gonna look at this ground. And as soon as I feel comfortable, then I'll look up at you. And by the time she looked up at me, she was all the way out here, right? So this is what I mean by step outside your comfort zone. There's nothing to hit here except the cone. And I do, trust me, I understand how uncomfortable it is to do this. It's ridiculous that it's uncomfortable because this is what's keeping the bike up. I don't need to do this to do that, but that's what we instinctively do. The more you learn this, the, also, the, also, the other connection is if you already fear riding slowly, chances are you're not gonna do this. You're just not, right? The chances are. But you guys are not there. You're, not, you're really not there. You're not there at a high level. I'm talking about as far as the fear in the riding slowly. So it's coming. So next time I say, look at me, Nicole, Forget about what you're feeling and just look at me because in her defense, somebody will come in here and they're doing just fine. And I go, look at me. They look at me, bike goes down because it just threw them way off. They looked at me and pulled the clutch in, right? None of this changes much, all right? All right, guys, exercise number seven. Yeah, exercise number seven, figure eight. So we're dealing with the same width. You guys really didn't have an issue with the width, so that's fine. 46 feet length. Now the length is relevant because we're doing a figure eight. So you have 46 feet in length, 27 feet in width. Use all of the space that you need. If you don't need it all, you don't have to use it all. But keep in mind, spread like the Red Sea, please. Keep in mind that when we come up here, because you guys are going to be coming through where my motorcycle is, that's the entrance, that's the exit. So, stand right there, Kevin. Thanks. So, when you come in here, Head, knife, handlebars. I want you to look at that green cone that's right there. And I want you to hold the turn. Now, if you come all the way to the top, ideally, that's what I want you to do. Uh, because if you don't, if you start here, then you have to make it up down there. If you turn tight, that's not a big deal at all. This is a ton of space if you turn tight. Uh, Jerry, he can do it in four spaces uh, if he wants to. Uh, so, head and eyes, handlebars. Hold this turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. When you get to 12 o'clock, top of this box, look at that green cone right there. And that's what you're going for. Hold this turn. Again, use all of the space that you need. If you don't need it all, you don't need to use it all. But hold this turn. Hold it. Hold it. Right here is where people start coming out of the turn. You're not going to that corner. You're going to the side. That's the corner you go to coming in. After that, there's no more corners. It's, the, it's that same cone right there. Your goal is to either be at that cone or even before it. All that does is give you more room for the next turn, right? It's not absolutely necessary. If your right turns are tighter than your left, then your left turn could be a little bit wider because you're, you're more comfortable leaning right, and that's your next turn. So hold this turn, hold it. Keep in mind, you're gonna hear me saying, hold it, hold it, hold it, probably for the rest of the exercise that we're doing out here. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Don't transition slow because you're still moving straight. You're gonna lose space. Head and eyes, handlebars, but you also don't wanna transition too early because if you do that, now you're this far off this line, you're gonna have to make it up over there. So when you make the transition, your motorcycle should either be facing this or this, not like this. Remember in the single serpentine when I said the longer you hold the turn, it's gonna give you time and space? Well, that's what this is doing. This is giving you time and space. If you go like this, you're taking away space and you're making yourself have to do stuff quicker. Here, head and eyes, handlebars, looking for that green cone again, hold this turn, Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm coming up to 12 o'clock, so now from here, I'm gonna look there. Hold it, hold, I know I'm not gonna get this. Nicole ain't gonna look at this cone the whole time, but we gotta try. Hold it, hold it, hold, don't start coming out. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Head and eyes, transition. That's how I want the transitions to be. And at no time in here are your handlebars straight if you're doing this properly, right? And we're doing this twice. I'm gonna demonstrate it, come in here. Hold it, hold it, transition. Hold that turn, hold that turn, hold that turn. All we're doing is U-turns like you just did, but you're holding them, right? You're holding them. Whenever I do private lessons out here, I did it with Willis. I have people do U-turns, and if I see they're comfortable, okay, now I wanna see them do a U-turn, and I make them hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then come back here and come to a smooth stop. He rocked it all. 
If I see stuff like that, you got this. Because sometimes people struggle with a U-turn. If you try to make them continue it, forget about it. It's like, you know, but I don't think I'm going to have that problem here. Any questions? And I'm going to demo it. I'm going to do it. The first one, I'm going to use all of the space. Then when I come in the second time, I'm going to use just the four spaces. And the only thing that's going to change is what, Nicole? <laughs> What's the only thing that's going to change? Now, speed's not going to change. It's going to stay the same. The handlebars and the lean, that's the only thing that's going to change. Everything else stays the same, right? All right. That speed's good. Head nice. Hold the turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Nice, nice transition. And that's what I'm looking at. Jerry doesn't have to be in four parking spaces. I'm looking at his wheel placement, his head and his eyes. Very nice, Jerry. Very nice. I'm not gonna say anything. So she's early, she's good. Excellent, excellent. Nice head and eyes too. I'm so confused. I'm, good job. I'm so confused. I don't understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> You got no problem leaning there right away. That was beautiful. Oh man, that was nice and smooth. A lot of room giving up at the top, but his right turns are good. Good, keep the speed up, keep the speed up. God, really early. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I thought he messed up at first on that last one, but his right turns are his strength. So that was like 19 feet on that last one. He started that really early. Good, hold that turn, hold it. Hold it, easy on that rear brake, transition. Lean it over, lean it over. Come back over, start over. All the way to the top. Hold that turn, good, hold it, hold it. Easy on that rear brake, hold the turn, hold it, hold it. Transition. All the way over. Keep that throttle up and steady. Hold that turn, head and eyes, look at me, come to me, hold it. Good, hold that turn. Hold it, hold it. Ah. He's fighting that rear brake. Jerry, one more time, Jerry, one more time. See right there, Jerry stands up. He slows down a lot and stands up. That's the only reason it takes him out of the four feet, the four boxes. But again, that's not a big deal. Excellent, Jerry. Next exercise. I got nothing to say. I'm just going to watch the cold do a thing. See, she's really early right here, but it doesn't matter. Uh oh. It might. Yeah. All right, stop right here. 
Bring it out, friction zone. Oh, oh. All right, shut it off. <laughs> what happened there? Got in my head. I did well the first time. And I mean, I extremely just, well. Just I'm going to tell you what happened. There's yeah. one thing wrong. This is how far you were from those cones. Uh -huh. So that's why that was so tight. And then you still had it, but you looked at those cones yeah. and put a foot down, and you still were in it. So try it again. Just remember, make sure you come to the top, and the rest okay. is gravy for you. These stops, oh, my God. We're going to get it. Come right back in. Come right back in. All the way to the top. Good job. Watch the throttle. A little too high at times. Good job, man. Thanks, Jerry. Go all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Keep your speed up. Hold that turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Ah. I have the finger of blocking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You want to... You... Yeah, can you want to try it again? Okay. I don't get to hear my motorcycle often in the distance. Sounds okay. Good. Keep your throttle up. Hold that turn. Keep the speed up. Easy on that rear brake. Head and eyes. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number eight, offset double serpentine. Rolling right through, guys. Rolling right through. Questions? Figure eight? I told Nicole she's confusing me. You know, it's almost like the road glide. The road glide is confusing me because I'll tell you, I just don't like the way it looks. But then somebody will pull up on one, and I'm like, oh, man, that bike looks good. I'm like, what the hell's going on? It's an angle thing, colors thing. I don't know. But anyway, um, because when, when she's making U-turns, she looks like she's tentative to do certain things, and then she comes in there on the figure eight, and both sides, just smooth the whole way. Can't figure this stuff out. Anyway, uh, you guys did that great. That was awesome. As a matter of fact, uh, Willis, on your second turn, I said, oh, man, he screwed up. He started way too early. I don't know if you did that on purpose, or you just said, I got this. Because he did that in like 19 feet, that last turn before you went out. The And I, like I told you before, I said, when you come back, I said, please come back here for a, pr a practice session. Because when you go back and watch that, man, it's just good. Your right, all of you guys, your right turns are better than your lefts. I just think it's comical. Everybody said left. Except maybe Jerry. Jerry, I, I still think Jerry likes less better than, I, I don't know, but Jerry. Jerry's kind of even on both sides. All right. Offset double serpentine, guys. Uh, Nicole and Jerry already did it. Uh, so now the rest of us are going to do it. And again... My bike is, well, normally I have the bike facing like this. There's seven gates, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, Kevin, initially, if you want to try it the regular way, that's fine. If that doesn't work out, then you'll be coming in here. Everything else after this is the same, though. 
when you guys come in here, I don't want you to go straight for the next gate, right? I want you to, as soon as you pass here, exercise number five, dip to the left, hold that turn, head and eyes, look at that gate, head and eyes, and now I want you to turn toward it. I want you to favor the outside cone. So when you come through this gate, you should be closer to this cone than you are to that cone, and you should be facing this way, not this way. It's not impossible, but again, so when we come out here and we practice, the goal is not just to make it through stuff, it's how you make it through. Right? So this exercise, you should be just like we just did. Exercise number five, when you, as soon as you come in, I want you to dip the motorcycle to the left, and then you're gonna dip it to the right. Hold the turn, just like you were doing over there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And as you're holding this turn, as soon as you get to this gate, look at the gate you came from and go to it. Head and eyes, hold it, hold it, hold it. People wanna come out and go straight for the gate, no. Space and time, that's what holding it's gonna give you. Hold it, hold it, and people are gonna go, still? Yes, hold it, head and eyes, handlebars, because if I'm coming from here, I got way more room to make this turn than if I do this. If I go straight for that, the next turn, I'm gonna wind up past the next gate, unless I really lean the motorcycle. And we wanna work smarter, not harder. So again, this is another exercise where your handlebars should never be straight. Head and eyes, hold it. As soon as you get to a gate, look at the gate you came from. Head and eyes, handlebars, favor the outside cone. Hold this turn, hold it, don't change anything. Hold it, hold it. I'm at the gate, head and eyes, look at the gate I came from. Hold the turn, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Head and eyes, handlebars. I want you facing away from the next gate. You don't have to be all the way away, but I don't want you going right to it. Every time I do this exercise, I got it, Rob, as soon as they come in here. That's all you're getting, Rob. And then they wind up going straight for the gate, right? Hold the turn, okay? Questions? Demo. That's why I'm going in at an angle, not straight. Exercise number five, remember these things all these, I didn't put these things together haphazardly. It's a reason for it. Exercise number five, I told you when you transition, transition with a purpose. Don't baby it. Same thing here. When you transition, transition. And when you transition, let the bike lean over. And that's what the bike's doing. Boom, boom, boom. Never are your handlebars straight. All right? All right. Questions? Let's do it. Nice. Very nice. I want her to hold that turn longer. See how wide she is now? So by not holding the first and second turn long enough, it's gonna affect you the rest of the way. Again, you can always correct it. All right, dip it to the left, hold that turn, good. Favor the outside cone, hold the turn, 
Hold it. Hold transition. Keep your speed up. Hold the turn. Hold the turn. Transition. Easy with that clutch. Going too slow. That's what's going on. Mm, mm, mm. You got lost? All right. Yep. You're going around the orange cones. But you're going to favor the green cone. Get closer to it. You're good. Turn the handlebars. Hold the turn. Hold it. Came at it too early. Too early. Got to hold that turn. Now you're past the next one. All right. So, Nicole, remember, hold that turn. You didn't hold the second turn long enough, and it put you past the next gate. All right? Hold it. You ready? Dip to the left. Hold that turn. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Good. Hold that turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Good. Hold that turn. Good. Keep holding it. Keep holding it. Transition. There we go. There we go. Nice, Kevin. Hold that turn. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, he went out the other gate. Tip it in. Good. Transition. Hold that turn. Nicole said Jerry is her inspiration, motivation. Notice his speed, not too fast, not too slow. Outstanding. Dip it in, good. I want you to hold that turn longer. Hold it, hold it, transition. The first turn's not being held long enough, that's the issue. There we go. Start over, start over. It's another 10. Another 10 push-ups. So the issue is you're not holding the first turn long enough. Okay. So this is one of those exercises where if you start it out wrong, the rest of the way, it's a ripple effect. So when you make this turn and you dip to the left, hold it longer. Because think about it this way. You're approaching the first gate with your bike facing like this. When I want it like this. So if you're facing like this to make that first turn, you started that turn too early. Hold this turn. Okay? All right, let's do it again. Dip it. Hold the turn. Hold it. Hold it. Nah, too early. Too early. See how close you are to this gate? Too early. It's all starting at that first gate. And it's like people come in there, they come in that first gate and they just wanna immediately start turning towards the gate. Same thing, hold that turn, hold it, hold it, transition. Nice, Kevin. Perfect, perfect. Hold that turn, hold it, hold it, transition. Nice. He can actually go through the other cones. I want you to hold that turn longer. There we go. Nope, not holding it long enough. So now you're passing the gate. No, you're passing it now. See how you pass the next gate? Hold this first turn. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold transition. There we go. There we go. Hold that turn the same way. Transition. That's what I'm talking about. Hold that turn. Hold it. Transition. Nice head and eyes. Good. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Beautiful. Easy with the speed. Transition. Watch your speed. Watch your speed. Hold that turn. Hold it. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. It was the issue with right from the start, not holding the turn long enough. Hold that turn. Good. 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 Transition.
There you go. Work with what you got. He started out with the tight ones. Now he's well past the gate, but he's going to come back to it. Not a competition. That's fine. Easy with that rear brake. So what he's doing is he's fighting. He's making it fight. Yeah, one more. Good, hold that turn. There we go. You got to hold it longer. Easy with that rear brake. It's the same issue, not holding turns long enough. Now you held it too long. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Too early. See? All right, I want you guys to know 90% of the motorcycle riding community can't do this. So it's important that you know that. Um, I just noticed I called you Nikki before. I didn't even ask you. I'm sorry. Is that okay? All right. So what, a, what an amazing event that just happened. Nikki held his first turn and then knocked it out of the park because that was the only issue. And the same thing could happen with you, Willis. People come through the first gate, and even though I told you this in the beginning, even though I tell them, hold it, they say, ah, that's enough, Robert. That's all you're going to get. So if you approach any of these gates and your bike is facing like this, it means you didn't hold the turn before it too long. Or you didn't hold it long enough. When she held it, and plus, I know you and you don't have an issue leaning. So you could hold it even a little bit longer, head and eyes, handlebars. That's the reason why people don't want to hold the turn, because they don't want to lean the bike. Head and eyes, handlebars, and bam. Not only did she lean the bike, but I'm looking at her and the gate, so I know when to tell her transition. And when she transitions, she's favoring the outside cone. If you're inside, you're losing space. Her head and eyes are beautiful. I, see what I mean? I can't figure this out. <laughs> head and eyes. She comes here and holds it. Holds it. Holds it. Holds it. And I know it's like turn already. No. Hold it. Head and eyes. She did that on every gate. That's the key. You got Holding it buys you space and time. And oh, how can I forget about Kevin? Kevin, and I started to tell him to do it, and he did it anyway, because I'm looking at him, and he's actually making his bike go straight just to make it through those wide ones. So I was going to tell him, try the close ones, and he did it anyway. And that's fine. That's why they're both there. Sometimes you might need the wide one. Sometimes you might need the close one. So good for you, Kevin. I like it. He saw it, and he said, let me try it. All right, one more time, guys. Nice. There we go. Oh, just beautiful. And hold that turn. Transition. There we go. Keep holding it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Oh, she held, you held that too long. It's okay. I said I wasn't going to tell her when to transition just to see if she, you know, got, had the hang of it. Beautiful. There we go. Hold that turn. Ah, too early. Too early. Not holding the second turn long enough. But you can make it up. Good, hold this one, hold it, transition. There we go, that's how you make it up. Hold it, hold it, transition. See, he's favoring the inside cone. Of course, some space, but he's good. Watch your speed, good, hold that turn, transition. The left turn, his elbow is up, see how his elbow? It looks very uncomfortable. Good, very good. Watch the speed. Just because I give you space doesn't mean I want you to go fast. You're still going to keep the same speed. Good, good. Hold that turn. Hold it, hold it. Transition. There we go. All right, guys, we're coming up to the last numbered exercise, which is the abominable snowman. And it will be abominable today because I know that uh, Jerry's going to be up there. Again, it's not necessary. It's extreme. All right, let's do it. This is why one of the three C's is consistency. So Willis came through, first turn. Oh, beautiful. That's how I want you to hold it. Second turn, no. Right back to the old ways. So again, that's why we practice this stuff. And I purposely said, okay, I'm not going to say transition now. I just want to watch Nikki do it. And now Nikki's waiting too. She's holding it too long. No big deal. This is what I mean. We 
Sometimes we do something too little, too much, and then you split the difference, right? Uh, Kevin, I see your progression as we've gone through today, right? And that has just loosened you up. I don't want to jinx anything, but you're looking good, man. Looking really good. Man, if you had a Hawley, you'd be a superstar out here. <laughs> oh, man. And when you, because when you make a, is it left? One of them where your elbow is like a weapon. Because it's like this. You know, it just looks, it looks very uncomfortable. I don't know how it feels. But shit, I just hurt myself doing that without even, you know. <laughs> All right. But uh, anybody got any questions about that? All that's about is holding it, holding it, and then transitioning. And of course, doing it at the right time, right? It's re of course, things are repairable. Again, re repairable, correctable. And again, this is not a competition. If it were, like in wheel school, if you went past the next gate, that's it. It's over, right? Um, but I like watching you guys. I like stuff not to work out and watch you figure it out because that's how you learn. If everything works out, you'll never learn anything, right? Okay. Moving on, this is the last numbered exercise, guys. This is the abominable snowman, and yes, it will be abominable because Jerry will be at the top. I know he will. Mickey, <laughs> don't worry about what Jerry's doing. <laughs> uh, but I'm not trying to discourage you. If you want to go for something, you go for it. Uh, the green cones represent different circles. That's all they're there for. So right now I'm standing in the 27-foot circle. I like to believe that the, I used to do the, the iron cross, well, no, I can't call it the iron cross because I didn't have it at 18 feet all the way around. So I'll call it the intersection. I used to do that, uh, but I find that this exercise right here, there's something here for everybody. If you, if 27 feet is all you're comfortable with, you don't ever have to go do the rest. Again, like I told you guys before, it's the whole hold it, hold it thing that is the issue. You guys know Lori? She lives out in Florida. Lori is actually Preloader Nation's Florida ambassador, right? Her and her husband, Mike. Okay, so I mean, Lori is that person that if I ask her a question, she's gonna know the answer. And at the anniversary lunch, when we were doing the Q&A, it just so happens the question was, what kind of exhaust do I run on my bike? And she said, <laughs> custom dynamics. <laughs> because she don't know nothing about what's on the bike, but she knows how to ride it. And she had only been riding uh, for 12 weeks. Everything she knows about riding, she learned on this channel, right? And she's big time. So what I'm about to tell you guys, she actually put it on Facebook. And I said, see, this is how she learns. When you guys come in here, I want you to do this. We're going to do this twice, maybe more. But the first time you do it, if you come this way, the second time you do it, I want you to go that way, right? When you come in, if we're going to make a left turn, I want you to place your, your front wheel right here in this vicinity. And because we don't have any road glides here, I should get that. If I get road glides, they're right here. And they'll put their hand on a stack of Bibles and say, I was right there. They have no clue. Placement. Placement. See these two cones? Remember I told you in exercise number four, I don't want you to hug my cones? Well, these cones feel they're a little different. They like the affection. So hug these two cones. Hug them. And why do we hug these two cones? Because if I commit to a turn from here, we're in a circle. If I give up that space... I'm gonna have to make it up over there. It's not a big deal if you don't have an issue with the size of the circle. But if you start getting into tighter circles, all of this stuff becomes more important. Placement, hug them, commit. Placement, hug them, commit. Commit to the turn, commit to the lean, and hold it. Remember all that yelling out saying hold it? That's all this is, it's holding a turn. Remember how great Nikki did that figure eight? That all she was doing was holding a turn. But holding this one longer though because we're doing a full circle. And if you want, you can go around it twice and go back out. This is your entrance and your exit. If you want to continue going up, come back around, come through these green cones, placement, hug them, commit. Same thing. There's a patch of dirt there I couldn't get out, but nobody should be there anyway. It's right in the middle pretty much, okay? And go up and up, whatever you want to do. Whenever, if you don't want to go up anymore, go around and just come back and then go back out, all right? Placement, hug them, commit. That's the key. Turn your head and your eyes, lean the bike, and keep it lean. Wherever you are in the friction zone, stay there. Don't change anything. It happens all the time, people start slowing up. Now, in this exercise, yeah, your handlebars are gonna be straight, but that's only if you're going from one circle to the other. Boom, boom, boom.
I'm going to demo it. I got to take my camera up there to demo it. Questions? None? All right, guys, we got 27 feet, 25 feet, 22 feet, 18 feet. Remember, a circle is tighter than a box. So if you were killing the 18 feet and you're ready to say, I'm going to do it up here, you can, but placement, hug them, and you have to commit to the lean right away to be up there. If your wheels are not placed properly, uh, you don't lean the bike enough, you don't turn the handlebars enough, it's just not gonna happen, period. Not on these bikes. But again, that's excessive, it's unnecessary. Placement, hug them, commit. Hold this turn, hold it. Jerry going first. Of course, he's going to be well off these cones in the 27 foot circle because he doesn't need to all of the space. Place it a little early on this side, and that's the result. He's not committing to the lean right away, and that's all that is. If Jerry commits to the lean right away, that turns way smoother. But he he waits so late to commit to it that now it's extreme. Plus his wheel placement was a little early. All of that means he has to lean it extremely, and you know, let's see how he does going right. Good, all the way over. She's early. Gotta lean more. Okay. What happened here? Um, I hit the cone. I got nervous. Why? Why'd you hit it? Because I... I'm gonna tell you why. I save you time. Okay. <laughs> you started this turn from right here. Okay, I cut it short. Yeah, yeah so... I do remember doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's a placement thing. That's all it was. If you started that... If you were... Because you... I mean, you didn't kill that cone. You nipped it, yeah. and it made you. As soon as I felt it, I felt. Uh, I got nervous. Yeah. So I, exactly, and the foot came down. Yeah. Just open that cut. Sure enough, you opened it. <laughs> Good job. Do it again. Come in the other way next time. Another way. Placement, guys. Placement. Hug them. Come in. That's all. That's the only thing that went wrong there. Now, of course, if she leaned the bike more, then that wouldn't have mattered. But if that's the most she leans, you got to place the wheels properly. Good job. Now, Willis and I did a private lesson together. And we didn't do this exercise, but we did components of it. So nothing's different. Same techniques. Easy with that three and break. All right, so he's getting gun shy up here and giving a lot of rear brake. All right, Kevin, show him how it's done. You represent all of Indian, no pressure. Good, turn it, turn it, lean it over, good. Hold that turn, hold it, perfect. Rear brake, rear brake, just a little, good. That's good, that's good. But Jerry is doing, he's, not Jerry. Kevin is uh, fighting a lot with that rear brake, so that's something he's going to have to work on. 
I'm going to uh, advise him to do some instructional drills. I'm going to advise him to do some drills, I mean to say. Brakeless. Just simple stuff, nothing crazy. Like the slow ride. Coming back in. See the throttle blipping? No head and eyes. Nope. So it's the same thing. You gotta commit, Jerry, commit right away. Too early. Yeah, that's wheel placement thing, but also, so wheel placement coupled with not committing right away and that, with that combination, that's not gonna happen. Placement, go all the way to the cone, whether you need to or not. Because we got to practice being able to place that wheel. So we want to do it even if we don't need to do it. Good. All the way to the left. All the way to the left. Still a little early. Not enough lean, too much speed. That's why she's into those cones. I didn't even have the camera facing that direction because I didn't think she was going in there. <laughs> Listen, guys, even in this big circle, I want your wheel right at that cone because I, I want you to practice placing the wheel at the cone. Whether you need it or not, that's what I want you to do. Placement, because all of you guys are off. Jerry's off at the top. So, and the fact that Jerry's off, plus he doesn't lean right away, is just not gonna happen, all right? Placement is so important. Take it all the way there and then hug him. There we go, nice and smooth. Nice, nice throttle. Clutch, clutch. Good, all the way over, all the way over. Hug him, hug him, commit. Good, lean it over, good. Keep going, keep going, all the way over. Nah, too early. Lean it over, lean it over. There we go. Yeah, we got some brave people here. Good, all the way, go, hold that turn. Lean it over. Good, good, watch your speed. Easy on that rear brake. Easy, a little too fast, a little too fast. Okay, good, good, very good. Very good, and right out if you want. Woo-wee! Nice throttle, too. Nah, too early, too early, Kevin. Yeah, way too early. Good job, man. Jerry, you can just go to the top if you want. <laughs> Let me get to the top so I can, okay, he's right, he's making the left there, so he'll be making the left up here. Right here, Jerry, right here. Hug him, commit, lean it. Nah, he's not leaning it. All right, it's closer. Now we had the wheel placement right, but he didn't lean, he didn't commit to the lean, I mean, he didn't lean enough. Because the placement hug him is commit. You got to commit. Good. Nice steady throttle. Nice head and eyes. Good. Watch the speed. Watch the speed. Good. I hear the brake. All the way to the left, Nikki. All the way. Good. All right. 
Good. Hold that turn. Hold that turn. All the way to the right. All the way. Slow down. Slow down. All right. You're early again. Yeah, you're just early. That's all. Good. Hold that turn. Good. Very nice, Kevin. Yeah, it's his left turns. It's the left turns for you. Yeah. So it's the left turns for Kevin. When he's turning left, like his elbow is out like this. And the lean is like almost existent. But when he's making right turns, he can lean that bike over like nobody's business. And this is what I mean. How ironic is it that, you know, when I asked everybody, which is your favorite or what's the strong point, rights or lefts, they all said lefts. Meanwhile, all of them, it's right. You don't know what you don't know. I say it all the time, guys. All right. Bonus time. To lean or not to lean. Let's do it. Any questions, guys? Placement, hug them, commit. That's pretty much it. So anytime something didn't work out. So again, if you don't place the wheels properly, but you lean a bike enough, you know, that last one you did, you would have been fine. You know, but it's just a matter of leaning. So I was just saying to the camera at the end of the last practice session, how funny it is to me that everybody said their lefts were their strength. But it's just the opposite, you know, it's, you don't know what you don't. That's why it's, it's another reason why it's important to practice because how do you really know where you are unless you don't actually challenge yourself to see where you are, right? And then that's, gonna, that's where the confidence comes from. So when you get out in the real world and you see something, because make no mistake about it, there's nothing out here that we're doing that's not relevant out there. It's, it's, it's a big misconception. People think, oh, I just like to go fast. These, st these skills still carry over, right? As simple as that. And no matter how fast you're going, you got to slow down. Most accidents happen on a motorcycle at slow speeds for a reason. Because once you get into that speed range, everybody's clueless, right? So kudos to you guys. Kudos to whoever's been instructing you. And But the biggest kudos goes to you. Because you can watch a million videos. But if you don't go out and practice, it's, it's entertainment, right? All right, I'm not saying they're not beneficial because we got to learn this from all fronts. Whenever I pr practice, not practice, whenever I studied for a promotional exam on my job, I mean, when I, when I studied for that, I wanted to get as many senses as I could. I want to read it. I want to hear it. I want to see it, right? Because I want the highest level of success. I want the highest chances of success, I should say, all right? Anyway, but that's outstanding. And Kevin just rocking it. Wait till you see that video, man. That's why I started doing the handhelds in there because he was making me dizzy. He was just going around in a circle. Nice. I think that calls for some slow-mo. We'll see what happens. All right. That's why these things take so long to edit. Uh, all right. Bonus time, guys. To lean or not to lean? I think I'm, I think I'm gonna measure these again too because I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna say to you, they're ten feet apart, right? They're ten feet apart. It's called to lean or not to lean because it's up to you whether you're gonna try to get through this leaning or straight up. Seven cones. If you hit a cone, that's it. It's over for you. The goal we're gonna do best of three. Whoever gets through here with the most cones without hitting a cone, you you're the winner. That's it. Okay? I'm gonna demo it. And then it's on you guys. And I'm going to be behind you. I've learned my lesson. I used to record people from the side. And I can't see if they little just nick the cone. So now I'm going to be right behind you. If you put a foot down, same thing. 10 push-ups plus, that's it for you. And I'll let you know out loud what the number is. Okay? All right. Let me get my bike. Hey guys. I don't give them any advice. one sometimes I have to actually lean to get it in I say look where they're standing so but I'm covering the rear brake so I'm good all right questions that's right I, I appreciate your trust in me I'm coming at you in 3d all right let's do it hey Jerry I just called up Vegas and the odds are highly in your favor I'm just saying Three, 
four. Uh oh, uh oh. Let's sit five, six, seven. Seven cones, seven cones. All right, Nikki. One. Two up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, keep done. Two cones, two cones. Willis forgot to put the highway pegs in. Let's see if it bites him. It's two. Three. Very good. Four. Four cones! Four cones! Two cones! If he does seven again, it's over! <laughs> With the cup on the side. Five, six, seven. Seven cones. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You got it, Jerry. You're the winner. That's it. Seven cones twice. Nope. Not locking those balls enough. That's it. Two cones. Highway pick still out. Done. Oh, he's done. Yep, that right there, he had to lean it. That's the only way he was going to make it. Five cones, five cones. Yeah, too much speed. Not enough turn right here. Whoa! Three cones. His follow the leader time. Everybody familiar with the rules? Good, we're gonna go over them. I'm the leader, follow me. Do what I do as I do it. Jerry's gonna be behind me, so you gotta kinda pay attention to what he's doing. Um, and I'm talking about everything. When we make the right turns, left turns from a stop, I'm letting you know now, I'm gonna be right on the line. Right at the line, I'm gonna be right at the plus. So if you decide, ah, I think I'll move over just a little bit to the left, you're out. Pull your motorcycle in the middle, and we're gonna do a circle around you and blow our horns. It just means bye-bye. But don't worry, you're not going to be alone for long, all right? If you put a foot down, 10 push-ups, and you're out. Pull into the circle. If you hit a cone, uh, I'm going to be riding on certain portions of the parking lot where it's bordered by grass. If you run on the grass, you're out. You guys are pioneers. I'm letting you know now. Remember we made that turn from a stop over there? We're going to be doing it right there, too, but we're going to be going up a curb, all right? Again, there's no pressure out here. If you don't want to do something, you don't have to do it. The rules don't change, guys. I'm introducing the curb because the curb is giving you what Kevin's been doing all day to his bike, introducing something different that makes the bike do this. So Kevin, you got a lot of rear brake, man, a lot of rear brake. So I, I do want you to practice some exercises, particularly the slow ride, brakeless, or even the short starts and stops without, without stopping. Take your foot off the brake, try to go nice and slow, and then put your foot on it and apply gentle pressure because once you get in a stressful, position, I mean, you're making that bike fight, okay? And the, the Hawleys could fight more than the Indians. The Indians, they still having problems uh, right away. This is an older one, so maybe not, but if you ride in one of these newer ones, the Challenger or the Pursuit, you're going to check engine lights and everything start coming on, okay? All right. Um, I'm going to go get my 360 camera. It's nice and high up. So if you happen to, I like to think everybody's integrity is on point, but if you just happen to forget that you put a foot down, and when I, in post, when I'm editing it, if I see it, I'm going to blow you up. Then I'm going to put your name on the screen. I'm going to zoom it in, all of that stuff, right? All out of fun, guys. Any questions? All right, guys. If you were looking for the follow the leader, I apologize. I erased it by mistake while I was out in Vegas. But luckily, I had a second camera going for this portion of it. I added this. This is the right turn, left turn onto the curb. I do it on the other side, usually on the sidewalk. But I'm adding the curb just to add a little bit of difficulty to it and same thing this sidewalk's wider but you're not allowed to go on the grass and right here jerry goes on the grass <laughs> vi preloaders start your engines
Jerry. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Willis Hickerson. Where are you from? I am from Charlotte, North Carolina. How long have you been riding a motorcycle? Uh, 51 years now. What are you riding today? Uh, I ride a Go Wing, but today I'm riding a Road King that I uh, rented, the 2019 Road King. 2019 special. special. Yes, special. yes. Wonderful. And again, he's a pioneer for that. I normally rent out my Road King for private lessons, but I'm going to start doing it for practice sessions too because I, there's some people that would love to come out here, but they can't get their bike here. And let's face it, there's some people that just don't want to do it on their bike. Mm -hmm. So well, that's a whole other conversation. I did a video on that, guys. Um, how long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Uh, maybe six or seven months, maybe eight at the most. Okay. If you had to give yourself a rating, slow speed, one to ten, ten being the best, what would you give yourself? I'm going to say four, maybe five. Outstanding. All right. Did you enjoy yourself today? Man, fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, well, usually I ask people to rate themselves at the beginning, and then if, ask them if there's any change, but clearly we can't do that. So, um, who's this lovely young lady to your left? This is my beautiful wife, Regina, right here. Regina, Regina, say hi to Preloader Nation, please. Hello. <laughs> yeah, because I want them to hear her voice as well. It's all about the support system, guys, our brides, and if you're a female, our uh, husbands. And listen, or listen, even same-sex couples, I don't care. It's all about the support mm -hmm. and who is with you, who's supporting you. Mm -hmm. And there are some wives that will not hang out out here all day, but they'll still come out. And this is a support system. And Regina heard Willis just mentioning that he would at one day he has to make it out here for a lesson. So what did she do? She contacted me. She bought him a gift certificate for a private lesson, and that's really what got this all started. That's so right. that's what I'm talking about, guys. Yeah. I mean, it's the small things, right? It really is. So I say it all the time. Anita's my queen. Regina's his queen. Mm -hmm. But both of those women have earned that title, yes. right? Every queen, every woman's not a queen, and every man is not a king. Mm -hmm. It's got to be earned. So I say that to say, I just felt like saying it. It's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> but I like talking about motorcycles and stuff, guys. But love. Yeah. What does this say? Always love. Yeah. I love love, and, I, and and when it's on display, I just love it. So anyway, pleasure seeing you again, man. Yes, sir, indeed. And indeed. you, dear. Thank you. Right, and you'll be back, I'm sure. Oh, you can count on it. I can't wait for you to come back on your own motorcycle. Man, man, I don't know. I think I might have a different one by, at some point. Cause oh, I know you will, because yeah. Regina already said it. Yeah, because she said it. <laughs> All right. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I did, very much so. Do you remember what you rated yourself when you first came up? Yes, I did, five. Any change in that number? I don't. Maybe slight. Okay. And it's good. Like I said before, it's all about baby steps. And we're not supposed to come out here and just get it all in one shot. If you leave here with just a better understanding of what needs to be done, that's progress. I was a little rustier than I thought, but um, you I got killed stuff it. to practice. So. Guys, put in the comment section how awesome, how awesome you think that she did and if you agree with her number. I, she just did phenomenal. Like I said, I watched her when she first pulled up, and I already knew partly what I was working with. Pleasure it to meet you, dear. Great. I all can't right. wait to come back. All Thank right. You. All right. Did you enjoy yourself? I had a ball, like always. I uh, appreciate you coming out, man. Do you remember what you rated yourself when you first came out? Uh, six and a half. Any change in that number? No, I ain't going up today since I didn't make the bottom of the snowman. Really? Camp. So, all right, let me ask you a question. If you made the top of that snowman, what would your number be? Seven. Listen, you do the top of that. You, I ain't going to argue with you, man. <laughs> always a pleasure, brother. Enjoyed it. We'll be back to see okay, you. Okay, brother. Did you enjoy yourself? Absolutely. Do you remember what you rated yourself when you first came out? I do, a one or a two. Any change in that number? A little bit, two or three. A lot of work to do yet, but I'll get there. And you'll be back. I'll be back, me and my better half, and a couple of other bikes. Oh, beautiful. That's what I like yep. to hear, brother. I enjoyed it. I appreciate all your help. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right, guys, so that's going to do it. Practice session number 91 in the books. And again, there was only four of us. It's 105 now, so of course it goes quicker with less people. But also, people, they kind of they kind of got this. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, guys, if you're not subscribed to this channel, definitely hit that subscribe button. That helps me out. I want you to watch these videos, not just the practice session videos, but also I do, uh, I do all kinds of videos, guys. But there's riding tips. There's a playlist for that. I want you to watch all of that, guys. Absorb all of this information, but then you have to get out here and you have to practice it. You don't have to do anything crazy, guys. Start small. Get a concept and, and get comfortable in the friction zone. Straight up. Forget about turning or leaning first and then move on from there. And you'll see, once you start learning and trusting and believing, all of this stuff becomes so much easier. All right, guys? All right, listen, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have, guys. Less time complaining about the things that you don't. Break out of the mold of the average rider, guys. If you didn't see that video, I'll put that up here too, but definitely check that out. See, time doesn't equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride your motorcycles, you have time to practice on them. 
Until next time. All right, I'm getting in the middle. So it's recording, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to tell you one, two, three, and however you want to smile, or if you don't want to smile, whatever. One, two, three.